YouTube, it's Clint from Texas again, and I'm uh, going to try and make a video. We're going to talk a little bit about scorpion collecting. Some of the things that you might want to have if you're going to collect scorpions. Um, one thing that I think is very helpful to have is a nice set of tongs. So if you pick a scorpion up, you don't feel comfortable handling them, you can uh, remove them with this. I like a long pair, especially if you handle really poisonous, or, excuse me, venomous or or aggressive species. The longer, the better. Okay. Another thing I like to recommend is bottled water for my scorpions. I know that's spoiling them a bit, but uh, at least it doesn't have the chlorine and other harmful products that you find in tap water. And for finding scorpions, one thing that helps is to have a 934 nanometer or similar black light. Having ultraviolet light helps you to locate your scorpions. They'll usually glow. And so that's really nice to have when you're looking for one when it gets lost. Okay. Um, uh -oh. Something that also helps to have is a EpiPen. An EpiPen is uh, a device to help you if you're allergic to scorpion sting so that you don't go into anaphylactic shock. You can administer yourself um, a dosage of epinephrine. Now this is not anti-venom. This is just meant to get you the extra five or ten minutes it takes to get to the emergency room and receive professional treatment from a licensed physician. Um, one thing that helps your scorpions to be healthy is to use what's known as um, gut loading materials, vitamin supplements, things of that nature. There's all sorts of powders for a dry, you know, substance for your crickets to eat on. Uh, this is called Quenchers, and it's um, a product that can be used for the crickets and or the scorpions themselves to help supplement them with vitamins and calcium, things that they generally lack in, in their uh, ordinary diet. Um, one thing you'll also want to have is some enclosures, some suitable enclosures. Now this is a very small one, but notice it's a very small species. And again, there's a lot of videos and advice that you can get that will help you to know uh, what to use for each particular creature. But suffice to say, what you're going to need is basically some sort of medium, whether it's a coconut fiber, which I recommend for some of your moisture spe you know, moist uh, climate species, uh, whether it's a type of sand for some of your desert species and or some uh, bark or similar items. One thing you also want to have in an enclosure is a water source, preferably, and also uh, some sort of hide. Since these are bark scorpions, I have leaves for them to hide under, and they seem to like that very well. Now, if you're going to just give your scorpion something to snack on, uh, there's mealworms that you can buy. These are called super worms. And I like them because they're nice and big and fat. And uh, again, you can supplement these with the quenchers as well. Um, but they're sort of like just a snack. You don't want to feed your scorpion a steady diet of these things because they don't really have a lot of nutrition unless they've been gut loaded. Okay, if you're going to ship species or transport them, one thing that you might want to do is have some containers. Uh, old pill bottles make a good device for transporting. Of course you want to take either a, a small drill bit or uh, a hot pin or something of that nature, maybe a soldering iron, poke some holes in the top so there can be an air source. A lot of times when people transport scorpions they put um, tissue in the bottom. Uh, if it's a desert species you want to leave just the dry tissue but if it's a jungle or forest species you will want to moisten the tissue some so that there is moisture to keep them nice and happy. Old, old uh, medication containers work really well. Uh, a lot of people use what we call deli cups. Again deli cups the best thing to do is take like a old soldering iron that you're not going to use anymore and poke holes in the top. Uh, you may want to label each particular one, and if you're able to sex your scorpion, you'll want to put both the name as well as the sex of the scorpion for reference. Again, you see there's holes in that one. 
And if you're going to be disingenuous and sell the wrong scorpion, whatever you do, don't put the right name of the scorpion on there. You know, if you're going to sell something as a uh, emperor scorpion, don't send them in an Asian forest scorpion container. That's just really deceitful. Uh, that's actually happened to me. If you're going to transport them for long distances or you're going to ship them, um, sort of the industry standard is to have um, <clears throat> styrofoam lined containers. A lot of times you'll want to put paper or packing medium in there. For example, we would put this in here and then pack it sufficiently with um, tape. Also, you want to get a heat pack and put a heat pack in there, especially if it's going to go into a cooler climate or if it's going to go by air freight. Now, if you're sending desert species in the summer or you're sending, you know, tropical species in the summer, you probably won't need the heat pack, but uh, definitely in the winter you will. Now, one thing that I would also recommend is what this person did, and I thought it was very, very ingenious. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to dismantle this one so you can get an idea. But they cut a hole in the bottom, and they put a heat pack in the very bottom. That red line right there is the top of the heat pack. And you can see that that actually worked really well. And what they did when they sent their scorpions is they didn't pack the paper so tight that air couldn't get through there or that heat couldn't get through. And so when they put the containers on top, and then put the foam and shut everything up, it gave a really good heat transfer. You know, if you put the heat pack on the bottom and stick too much paper between the heat pack and the specimen, you risk the possibility that they will get cold. So you don't want to deliver dead scorpions if you don't have to. It's not good for business and it's not good for, for people's psyche. Of course, one thing that's also fun if you're just a joker and you have to get by with it is you can make a bead scorpion like my daughter makes and you can just throw that in there and when they don't expect it it'll come popping out and they'll get a real laugh. Um, if you're going to uh, ship feeder insects I would also recommend that you use egg crate and pack with your feeder insects. For example if you're going to send roaches, you're going to send crickets, things of that nature, just tear off a small piece, put it in there, put your animals if you want to put some food source and then a lid on it, of course, again with ventilation holes, but not so large that your feeder insects will escape. Okay, that's good. 